I think when you are looking for a career, the idea of doing something where you get to help people, where you have respect, it's a steady career. Yeah. I, I think the idea of, I was very good at sciences and I love being around people. It was the perfect career I thought. And then as I got into it, I realized you don't live your life on paper. And it was, <laughs> it was tough. Cause I think even during medical school, as much as I loved it, I love the challenge of medical school. But I think even then there was, I, I had a little unease and, and it's funny how I, I didn't, I didn't listen to it, or at least I thought this will resolve, this will It'll go away, go away. And even I, I will say, so even when I came to the point of in residency, when I had this epiphany that, and it really was, it struck me, it, it was the middle of the night. I was in an ICU and, and we were getting slammed with patients. And all of a sudden I thought, my God, soon enough, I'm going to be the one making life or death decisions. And as I was sitting there, I just thought, I want to go home. I want to be out of here. I, I felt, I, I felt like I was, I felt like a, a fraud in, in the hospital because mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I was committed. And I assumed everyone else around me was like you see on ER, these noble people like coming <laughs> yeah. up with these incredible ideas. And meanwhile, I just felt like I was struggling to stay afloat and feeling overwhelmed and feeling like I wasn't doing a service to my patients the best I could. And I felt like I I, I remember when when I was going in for call, I would just have a pit in my stomach, like mm. when the weekend was ending, you know, in elementary <laughs> yeah. school, like the Sunday blues. And I thought this is not a way a doctor should feel. And mm. and eventually, when I was in that ICU, I thought, listen, I can suffer through this but I can't risk my patience because I just had this fear. My God, what if I, what if I'm not present and something goes wrong and someone's life is forever impacted or God forbid ends because of me and a decision. And I thought I just couldn't, and it was this sense of guilt and fear. And, and I, that's when I thought I got to do something about this. And it wasn't as though I said, I need to be a stand-up comedian. That's always been my calling. <laughs> I thought I've got to, I've got to figure this out. I got to clear my head and, and figure out what's going on because I think it's, it's growing up. I think I, I was someone who focused on achieve and what's next and yeah. be it in sports, be it in school. And you, you almost get on a treadmill of, ah, I go to college. Oh, now it's medical school. Then I'll become a yeah. doctor. And, and, and it's hard because I think sometimes you don't, you don't step back and go, am I, is this still the path I should be on? Right. And, you know, it all kind of came crashing down in, in that ICU when I realized I, I, I felt I, I have to figure out, is this the right path? And so I, I, I knew I had to do something, but then came the realization that my dad's a doctor. He was a prof professor at the University of Colorado where I was working. And now I'm thinking, uh -oh. I have to tell my dad. And I, I, again, my dad wasn't someone who said, this is what you're going to do, but I didn't want to disappoint him. And so it took another month or two months before I worked up the courage to say, of I, I, I have to step away. I have to try something else. And, you know, in that time I thought, what could I do? Be a ski bum, whatever. And I thought, <laughs> you know what? I did stand up a couple of times. I thought I've never really done anything creative. I'm going to move out till I try stand up just to clear my head. And, and so I told my dad that, that uh, I was doing that. And I, I, the first words he told me when I said, I'm, I'm going to take a break from medicine and try stand up comedy. The first thing he said to me was life is short, do what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And it was such a weight lifted off of my shoulders when he said that, because honestly, if he'd gone, no, you're not, you're staying a doctor because that's crazy. I don't yeah. know that I would have had the courage to do it. I probably would have said, yeah. you're right. This is crazy. I'll, I'll just figure this out. And I don't know where I'd be right now. Um, I, maybe I would have figured my way forward, but I feel lucky that I got to come out here because I, I, I got out to LA and I started doing stand up, and it was just in a matter of weeks and, and I'm not doing stand up, you know, in the Hollywood bowl with thousands right. of screaming fans, I'm doing it in coffee houses <laughs> yeah, for yeah, four yeah. people who are, you know, staring at their notebook. And even with that, even with these awful crowds and not getting a tremendous response, there was something in me that clicked that just felt like I felt at home on the stage. And I felt like this is how I'm meant to help people. 